Hi SQL folks, welcome to another tutorial from SQL Maestros. This time we are going to talk about stressing SQL Server. You have been watching a lot of demos and tutorials on our channel and on sqlmaestros.com video lobby. And most of my demos have been around SQL Server performance tuning or query tuning. And in many demos, I stress SQL Server in different ways and then uh, create scenarios and then we troubleshoot performance issues, we troubleshoot slow running queries, etc. Many times you have seen me running a lot of batch files like these. So I'll show you what is there on the screen. Things like these, you know, like a command file and then there is a dot SQL file. Um, I don't remember seldom I would have opened them and showed you what's really inside them and uh, many a times queries have come from uh, viewers like yourselves where you ask okay how exactly am I stressing SQL Server what are these tools bash files that I'm using so I thought why not record this quick video to show you the tool that I'm using the technique that I'm following and when we talk about stressing SQL Server how am I creating that stress environment like stressing CPU stressing memory stressing IO so on and so forth okay so um, you may want to take down some notes. Okay, let's get started. First thing you will notice that there is a command file, a batch file here. Let's open this up. Okay, let's do the other way around. First, let's create a script. You know, we need to have a script that is going to be fired, that is going to be sent to SQL Server. So I will open up this one, stress underscore CPU dot SQL. If you look at this one, the file clearly says stress.cpu. So the kind of select queries that are written as part of this script, they are more CPU intensive. They will not eat too much of memory. They will not cause too much of IO, but there will be a lot of arithmetic. There will be a lot of mathematics, a lot of computations. That is where you require CPU cycles. Uh, now the scripts that you will see here are not the best ones, but yeah, if you see this folder of mine where, you know, this is part of our master class. So when you go to CPU performance monitoring and tuning, so I have a bunch of demos here. So if you go into core demo, uh, no, let's not go into the core demo. Let's get into part one CPU. Then you have CPU one, CPU two, CPU three. So in each of these demonstrations, there are a variety of workloads that are kind of CPU intensive. All I'm trying to give you is a few examples of the kind of workloads you need to write. So this one, coming back to this one, is nothing but bunch of T SQL queries here that are just going to go and execute and will require considerable amount of CPU cycles. That's what it is. So think about uh, doing a lot of aggregations. Think about uh, doing like, you know, uh, a lot of joins, uh, splitting strings and, and so on and so forth. Things that are CPU intensive, so to say. It's not about reading too much of data. It's not about requiring too much of memory, but it's like doing a lot of computations. Now, when you have a bunch of these workloads, just dump them into a .sql file, as many as you want. And... Um, yeah, once you're done with that, let's uh, save it, you know, any name that you want to give it. Like, for example, I've given stress underscore CPU. And then, okay, where is that folder? Core demo. Okay, I was in. Okay, core demo. And then I am going to use, so what, what, do you, what do we want to do next is we want to call the CPU file, you know, this stress.cpu. We want to run it. But running this with just one user is not going to create enough uh, CPU load on the server. You may want to simulate multiple users. This is where a utility from Microsoft really helps, which is ostress.exe. All you need to do is uh, go to your favorite search engine and just type in O stress and it will bring you probably, a, or maybe you can just type in RML utilities, replay markup language. RML utilities and you may want to download the 64-bit version uh, and of course the latest version from Microsoft website. This is a tool, a set of utilities that is built by the Microsoft uh, SQL team. Helps you in, in a lot of different ways and once you download and uh, there are a bunch of executables out there, one of them is ostress.exe. Let's open this batch file. Now this ostress.exe gets installed here. Microsoft Corporation, RM Utils, whatever. I mean, that's the default path, which you can change during installation. I, I don't know if you can really change that, but yeah, just calling that out. We are calling this Ostress uh, EXE and we are supplying it with the 
dot sql file which you have just created so i've called like stress underscore cpu dot sql that is with the parameter hyphen i that's the switch we are using hyphen i hyphen e here stands for trusted connection uh, windows authentication hyphen i is for the input file uh, hyphen q is for the quiet mode so that we don't get the output on the console then you have hyphen n which is the um, which is number of users number of threads this is the most critical thing so i talked about that if you're just running this you're stressing sql server this stress.cpu with you know you can always take this and run it in management studio also but that would be a very bad way of doing things and i will come to that in a moment when you uh, just create a few users like three, four, five, 10, it's not enough load. If you really want to stress SQL Server to 100% CPU utilization, you need hundreds of users. This is where this tool is most useful, which is I am going to create 200 threads that are going to call stress.cpu.sql. Uh, 200 users are going to run this uh, file and is going to run the workload. That is going to create enough stress. Then hyphen S is for the instance name, server name, sorry, that's the server name, SQL Maestros. And yeah, that's pretty much, that's, that's the simplest, you know, batch file you could probably ever see. And all that we are doing is just calling this. When you execute this, 200 threads will be created and they're all going to call each one of them. They're going to run this workload. Now, let's see this quickly in action. Now you will see that the CPU load is very minimal right now. And um, yeah, where is it? Utilization is just about 2%, 9%. This is what you are seeing. So let's fire stress.cpu. It will take about a few seconds and go back here. And once the number of threads are created, you will see the CPU utilization jumps and touches 100% constantly. This is what you really want. You're stressing SQL Server. And now when you're stressing SQL Server, you may want to do anything and everything that, that whatever your objective is, whatever the purpose of creating such an environment is, uh, and the purpose is solved. The moment execution is done, if you look in this window, now the execution is done. It took about 26 seconds. Yeah, you get these statistics also, which are helpful. Press any queue to continue. So let's do that and the window will close what happens not closing okay it closed now the moment execution is done you can see the cpu utilization comes down okay so i talked about um, manually running this like you know if you open multiple instances of this in management studio and then you run it manually like you create one window second third fourth and you just keep on create clicking execute i've seen people doing that what's what is wrong with that well, the thing that is wrong with that is it's just not about executing the workload. The problem with SSMS is that when you run such workloads in SMS, SMS, so many, so many scripts, so many select queries, SSMS has to render the output in the console, right? In the results pane, that is a pain, right? So rendering the data in the results pane will consume a lot of time. That is not necessarily the execution time of the query. That is probably so-called the elapsed time or whatever time it takes to render the final byte of the output, uh, which is uh, which is of course not what you want. I mean, you don't want, and, and it's going to take much longer to execute. Like let's say there are about 20 select queries in this uh, workload. Each of them will render their results the, the data set in the results pane, that's going to take a lot of time. And of course, how many windows will you create and keep running them? At some point, you're going to see that at SQL Server Management Studio, this tool has limitations. It won't allow you to create so many windows. It will slow, it will slow down so much uh, that you just will not be able to operate. And finally, it will give up. It will tell you SSMS is not responding so that will be a bad way uh, definitely not recommended and what i showed you is highly recommended which is using o stress utility well there are other utilities too um, uh, there are a lot of them so i just i just don't want to pick up uh, one or two i'm just uh, my intention is to show you what i do in our demos tutorials and master classes now while i am talking about this and you're watching all of this you're you're certainly wondering okay amit 
this is a stressing CPU. What about if you want to like kind of stress for memory or IO? Well, just change your script, just change these queries, these select statements and, and make them memory intensive. Okay. What could that be? Okay. Let's see some examples. Okay. I'll close this one, jump over and to my masterclass content there and pick up something here. Let's go to, okay. Wait types and I will show you. Okay. Let's pick up. Um, okay. Let's pick up resource semaphore. Uh, let's open up uh, workload, okay? Because you just want to see the script, the technique remains the same. Look at this query now, a very silly query. What is it doing? We are creating three instances of a table and we are doing a cross join. Things like this, this is going to require a lot of memory. Why? Because you are creating, you're doing a cross join and then you are doing a multi-level sort here. So look at this order by A, B, C, etc., etc. Now sort requires a lot of memory and this has to be done in memory. And then if memory is not enough, it will spill down to disk, which will also create a lot of IO, but this is not a good example of IO. It is a good example of creating, stressing the SQL server memory. Any operation that requires intensive memory, like sorting or hashing is good. It's good. Um, dealing, uh, let's say you punch in large tables, right? Instead of small tables, small tables might be good for CPU intensive stuff when you're doing computations. But when you want to uh, stress the memory out, then you may want to do this kind of stuff with large tables. That's going to require a lot of memory. Similarly, nothing different with IO just simply join multiple large tables and that could be absolutely meaningless join right you know you have table one full outer join with table two full outer join with table three full outer join with table four and all of these tables could be large tables let them be different tables not like self join simply because you want to have like multiple uh, io requests going down and reading different data pages from the disk and we're talking about physical IO here, of course, and such kind of queries, you may want to run loop and in each loop, you may want to drop the clean buffers. So like you write commands like dbcc drop clean buffers, things like that, so that you're clearing out the memory, uh, the, the data cache, the buffer pool uh, before each execution that is going to create a lot of IO stress on SQL server. Okay. We're doing all of this stuff for learning, you know, for creating tutorials uh, to reproduce customer scenarios. And of course, you will also do something similar for learning. Don't try to do all of this stuff on your live production server. Definitely not recommended. You may just get fired if you do something as silly as that. This is purely, purely for learning purposes. Alongside using these commands like dbcc free proc cache or dbcc drop clean buffers, totally all of to do with, uh, with learning and, you know, trial and error and practicing. Okay. I know you're thinking Amit, when you have shown us the CPU script, you've shown us the memory script, why not show the IO script? Okay. And while I was talking to you, I remembered that there is one in page IO lad, something similar that I talked about. I will show you the workload and something as silly as this, see this one. Okay. Just some big outer joints there, you know, like, these tables are not big, but you may want to have big tables and see we're dropping the clean buffers before execution. These are all full outer joints with the table and this is going to trigger a lot of IO stuff. Okay. Hope this helps and hope this was uh, useful stressing SQL server with O stress. Yes, friends, do check out the masterclass recordings. Uh, that is a very popular masterclass that we have. And of course, this is the content right in front of you. Very deep dive, comprehensive, full coverage. This is really what you need. 40 hours of HD recording is now available on sqlmaestros.com. And if you subscribe, you get lifetime access. Okay, friends, you don't need to really pick up a lot of courses like beginners, advanced, fundamentals, mastering, zero, hero, and whatnot out there. No, all you need is just this one. 40 hours of deep dive content. And once you subscribe, you can watch the content anytime, anywhere, as many times as you want. That's really a good deal for your money. Okay. Hoping that you will become a subscriber. Even if not, we have this channel and we have sequelmaestros.com where we will continue to put up a lot of free content. See you soon in another video. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. 
subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there, video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.